Hi everyone. Hi there. Today we'll be talking about uh, the microbiome, antibiotics, non-antibiotic antimicrobials, and some statements from the IDSA kind of, I guess, you know, being negative about long-term antibiotic therapies and antimicrobial therapies for Lyme. Yeah, so, so I hear so many patients, uh, I heard it myself, saying that the reason that they don't, uh, first of all, they don't support Lyme treatment and Lyme doctors is because uh, of the effect on the microbiome uh, these antibiotics don't work, and uh, not only that, they they cause death. You get C. diff and you just die from taking so, too many antibiotics and it ruins your microbiome. I hear this all the time. Patients need uh, a response to that. I have I I know the response because we've talked about it. But well, what, what should I, it be? first thing I want to tell everybody is that my grandmother died of C. diff. Mm -hmm. um, she was given antibiotics for pneumonia. Was not given probiotics. Um, they didn't really know about probiotics that much back then. I was in first year med school at the time, mm -hmm. and I've always taken the microbiome super seriously. And my antibiotic regimens, I can't say how other people practice. I know how I practice. We have, uh, you know, every case is individualized, but we go by these general algorithms of what we would like to do to minimize impact on the microbiome, mm -hmm. and just. Different antibiotics are created differently. Some of them have a huge impact on the GI flora and some have a very minimal impact. And, you know, drugs like tetracycline class antibiotics have a very small impact on the microbiome. It's just the mainstay of your treatment. And I also I think it's important not to let it go by that your grandmother died, uh, unfortunately, in a hospital, not from using antibiotics for Lyme. And most people that get C. diff do not get it because they were being treated for Lyme. Right. So already it's it's not really true that that is something that's commonly happening right i haven't had a case of c diff in my practice in years and the only couple of cases that we have had um that were we were p patients who were on cephalosporins which is not part of the algorithm that we use what are cephalosporins specifically? cephalosporins are like omnisef Sefton, things like this. Okay, I've never used any of those under your care, so yeah, we don't use, them. We, use don't, them. we don't use them anymore. And um, you know, so uh, like I said, we, I don't expect that we'll be having much more C. diff in my practice with the way that we prescribe. We use a lot of non-antibiotic antimicrobials. You know, this stuff doesn't impact on flora at all. You know, the herbals that we've talked about, things like oil oregano and artemisinin, we use fluconazole. Mm -hmm. You know, things like meprin and plaquenil don't impact on flora either. So you have a lot, a lot of um, options of non-impactful medications. So Tetra, Doxy, these are things, uh, minocycling, that kids are put on uh, under the care of a dermatologist for years to clear acne. But if you have a brain infection and you have a Lyme specialist who wants to put right. your child, a child or an adult on these for four months, six months, all hell breaks loose. So, so I'm right. always, always perplexed yeah. by that. So I was on three years of doxycycline for acne and I never had bad acne. It's so mm -hmm. nobody bats an eyelash and nobody warns uh, or admonishes the dermatologists that are doing this. So they don't warn the patients, they don't say this is a bad thing. And they really don't speak to the, the greater issue of why we have so much antibiotic resistance. A lot of it comes from our food industry, how they keep our animals on antibiotics from birth to death and the cattle industry and what have you. So I, um, I think very strongly that, you know, sometimes people will use a, um, like, a, a sensitive kind of phrase about the microbiome to make an argument, mm -hmm. even in this kind of like unjustified way. I mean, if we're cautious, judicious, and, uh, and we just take amazingly close care, we can treat patients in a long-term manner and not really wind up with a lot of dysbiosis, mm -hmm. a lot of altered GI flora. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I feel about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, what other topics do we need to talk about with this? Uh, well, I think we just got some exciting, we got our first, I oh, just yeah. want to talk about We have our thing. first, uh, co, what is it, co-funding partner, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be, uh, donating to Lyme, Lyme Connection. So, you know, we're doing, we're doing a co-funding arrangement with the Lyme Connection for our research. Lyme well, Connection is a, is, is a Ridgefield, uh, it's based in Richfield. Yeah. It's part of the town. It's uh, mm -hmm. sponsored by the town. It's an amazing organization. It's a nonprofit. Nonprofit, of course. Uh, fully tax deductible donations, and people can donate there and have it earmarked for Project Bartonella. As many of you know, um, 
were just awarded uh, the um, Emerging Leader Award by the Bay Area Lion Foundation. Thank you to the Bay Area Lion Foundation. Grant, yep. And it was a, a sizable grant that 100% of which is going uh, right toward our research. For some people don't know. Oh, we're developing a, um, a new drug that I would kind of come up with uh, to treat Bartonella and Lyme. And we plan to do the first in vitro studies, which means um, studies in the test tube mm -hmm. In a cell culture experiment, so basically allow these uh, microbes to get within white blood cells and then use this uh, new drug to see if we can eradicate them. I'm so excited that we're going to get work, to work with Ed Breitschweit and his team at Galaxy. Yeah. That is going to be really, really they're, incredible. They're very special. And um, so, you know, this uh, first part of the in vitro study will hopefully prove the core concept. Then we have to do another second half of the in vitro study. We didn't have enough money to do the full one, so we right. broke it up into two. Right. And I don't think people realize how expensive this research is. Um, you know, it's enormously expensive. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we want to announce that we have uh, Rescue Renovations, which is a company that uh, goes in and does um, sheetrock and carpentry and tiling Beautiful and work. mold abatement and highly skilled and what's um, their website uh, i guess i think it's rescue renovations.net okay and they've agreed to donate five percent of the proceeds if the people just say that uh for they call it project bartonella mm -hmm. and uh they will donate five percent of the proceeds to the lime connection and that goes toward our research so mm -hmm. if you have uh, work that you need done around the home. It's yeah. a way to have and you want to support this place research. fixed up and support the research. It's a win-win. Win. It's yeah. a win-win. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Okay, cool. So, and we would encourage other corporate sponsors. If anybody has a company, Apple. And, <laughs> Are you listening? Right, Apple. Google. Or, yeah, right. Exactly. Just five percent. Right. If, if not that much. Yeah. If if another company has an interest in donating to a worthy cause and uh, and wants to be. Um, uh, partner with us in our research, we'd be so appreciative. Yep. So thank you all. Thank you. Bye.